What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the shop. My name is John McGrath and this is my YouTube channel where I essentially play with tools and make stuff. And today I'm gonna to make a crosscut slate for my table saw. Now my table saw has a crosscut carriage, which I'm gonna take advantage of whilst making this crosscut slate. I've done some restoration work on this table saw, so if that interests you, I'll leave a link up here somewhere, go check that out. But for now, we're gonna crack on with this crosscut slate. Now why make a crosscut slate? Well, essentially all it is, is a jig with a 90 degree fence, a fence that's exactly 90 degrees to your saw blade. So it allows you to get nice, quick, accurate 90 degree cuts. Um, it also gives you essentially a zero, your zero clearance insert in the base and it supports your materials on both sides of the blade so it stops that frayed ends that you can get when you're doing cross cuts. So very simple. It'll all make sense as we crack on. So let's look at the materials we're going to use for this cross cut sled now. Let's check it out. Right, for the materials for this cross cut sled we're going to need some sort of flat board. I have 12 mil chipboard here. I have two sheets, they are four foot by two foot or 1200 by 600 mil and um, MDF or plywood will do as long as it's good and flat and it's a smooth you have smooth surfaces on your boards you're also going to need some form of hardwood to make your runners your runners are going to sit in your t-slots on your table saw I will be using three of my t-slots so I have one in my crosscut carriage and I have two on the table saw itself probably your table saw won't have a crosscut carriage on it so you can just use the two slots in your in your table saw it's the same process so yeah I have two boards one I'm going to use for my base, the other one I'm going to cut my fence out of and I have pieces of larch here that I'm going to use for my runners. This is what I have in the shop, this is what I have to hand, so this is what's going to get used. Now you can buy T-slot and stuff like that online that you can put into your fence. I have this particular T-slot fence that came with my table saw. Now it was the roughest part of the table saw. It doesn't really work with the crosscut carriage anymore, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and incorporate this into my fence, which will sit somewhere about here, and then I can drop my stops and my clamps off this. It may or may not work. This is a bit of an experiment, so we'll see. But uh, everything else will pertain to your particular table saw. So yeah, let's crack on. First job we need to do is make our runners. So let's do that. Right guys, before I cut my hardwood, I just took a piece of pine and ripped it down, set up my fence and ensured that my measurements were correct, just so I can check and make sure that we're 100%. I don't have much hardwood left, so this little bit of pine just as a test piece is a good idea. So what you want is for your runner to run nicely inside in your T-slot. There should be no play front to back, so you don't want any slop in it. It shouldn't be so tight that you have to force it. It should just run nice and smooth. And that looks pretty perfect to me now. So I know my fence is good, I know my measurements are good, and I know that I'm set up to make these cuts. So yeah, let's crack on and cut our hardwood runners. Right, we have our hardwood runners cut now, so they're the correct thickness. We're in all our three slots and our fit is good. Now what I wanna do is cut the correct depth. So I'm just gonna mark one of these. All three slots are the same depth. So I'll mark one of these, cut them, and that will do for all three. And then we can affix these to the base of our slate. So it's very simple. Let's make sure that we're bottomed out all the way along. I'm just gonna take a pencil line and just mark our hardwood runner and then we're going to cut all three of these to the correct depth very simple
Right guys, we got our three runners. They fit nice and perfectly. Everything is nice and snug and they are flush with the top of our deck. Now luckily enough, I happened to get all three pieces out of the one piece of runner. So these will be kept for uh, future sled projects, which is handy. Now, don't do what I did there. You might've seen me cutting this um, or running these narrow pieces through my blade. My riving knife sits a lot higher than my saw blade. So for me to use a sacrificial push stick to drive on through there, I can't. So I had to pull from the back, which is not avoidable with a um, table saw without a gar on it. So don't do that. Don't do what I do. If your particular um, table saw driving knife sits slightly lower than your blade, then you can just make yourself a sacrificial push stick, which you can run straight over the top of the saw blade and push that piece out. That's the ideal thing to do. So uh, just be warned, a little safety tip for you there. So right, next thing we wanna do is we wanna fix this these to the bottom. Actually, we wanna cut them to size. So that's four foot or 120 mil. And then we wanna affix these to the bottom of our slate. So what we're gonna to do to do that is we need these to sit slightly proud of our deck now. So I have just some washers here that I'm gonna drop in place. So. One, two, three, four. Just drop them in your T-slot like that. Just to help that um, runner just sit slightly proud so that you can glue it to the bottom of your board. Okay, nice and simple. I think three and that one will do. Right, okay. So I'm gonna cut the three of these to four foot now, and then we're gonna glue them to the bottom of our sled. Let's do that. Right guys, we have our runners now cut to the correct width, the correct depth and the correct length. So we're gonna place them on top of the washers that we put in our T-slots. That will just help them sit slightly proud of our deck so we can glue our, um, the base of our sled to them. So we'll line everything up in a minute. Now, we need to drop our saw blade and your riving knife beneath your deck so that you can sit the base of your sled on it. If your particular saw blade or riving knife does not disappear below the top of your deck, you'll have to remove them. And that's what I'm gonna to have to do. I'm gonna to to take off my riving knife now because once that gets to its lowest point, it's still proud of my deck. So that's in the way. So we'll just pull that off. Right guys, just make sure that your saw is unplugged from the wall. It takes two seconds to do before you go sticking your hands in on top of the blade and the mechanism. Just a little safety tip for you, all right? So I'm gonna pull this riving knife off now. Very simple, one bolt and pull it out. And now I can drop my saw blade beneath the deck. There we go, a little bit noisy, but that's flush now out of the way so we can sit the base of our sled on this and uh, glue it. That's gonna be our next thing, let's do it. Right guys, next thing we wanna do is line up our board with our table saw and make sure we're happy with absolutely everything. So position exactly where you want your sled on your table saw. I'm going from the edge of my Costco carriage in, right? So I'm four foot in from the edge of my Costco carriage. I'm just gonna use my fence as a quick rough guide to keep it square. Again, we will be squaring this fence that we're gonna to make to our blade so it doesn't have to be square on this fence. Don't worry about that. Just use this as a rough guide to get things roughly square and just as a stop so you can line up the base of your sled. Just make sure that all your runners then are lined up. You'll be able to just feel the edges there, feel from where they are. Once you're happy with that then, we can lift off this. I'm just gonna use super glue along our runners just to put this down. We're gonna drop some weights on top of it then just to clamp it. And once that dries, we'll be able to flip it over and countersink screws into it. All right, so that's the next process. So I have this lined up now. I'm happy along my fence. I'm happy along the front of my table saw. I'm happy that my runners are where I want them to be. So I'm just gonna lift this off and we should be able to put it back in that position, handy enough. Fingers crossed, famous last words. So let's put that to the side. Again, it's just gonna be some super glue along it. Double-sided sticky tape will work for this too, if you have some. But uh, 
it's just a quick adhesive. So we get this, line it up to our fence, line it up to the front of our table saw, so your fence comes in handy. So you can drop it back on your pieces, bring it back a touch, bring that in a touch there. Everything looks good, just drop some weight on it then. And we let that set, should be good. There we go, our runners are in place. So now it's only a case of drill these and screw them. So we're gonna countersink all our screws in these now. So uh, we'll take this to the workbench. Right, we'll drill this out now. Um, we're gonna use a countersink bit. This bit's actually a little bit on the long side, so you don't wanna drill all the way through your sled. Just be careful for that. Just enough a pilot hole is all you want. So make sure you don't go all the way through it. So I'll pre-drill all these. I've actually had to cut these screws, they're a little bit long. But once we have a pilot hole, that shouldn't be an issue. And then I'll countersink them all. That's the most important thing. So uh, let's get on with that. Okay, there we go, four screws in each runner, all countersunk, so nothing can scrape inside in our T-slots. Nice and simple. So let's take this back to the table saw now and make sure it slides. Beautiful. Okay, that's exactly what we're after, guys. Again, we will pace wax the bottom of this and uh, it'll run a bit freer, but that's nice and free. And even our cross cut carriage slides through it nicely. So I'm happy with that. Okay, so now it's on to cutting out our pieces for our fence. Then we will put this um, back on the table saw. We'll raise our blade and we'll cut our straight line in it. Let's do that. Okay guys, for our fence then, I'm gonna be using another one of these boards. I'm gonna cut our fence exactly the same length as this, so it'll be four foot or 120 millimeters long. I want to incorporate this fence off the, the existing fence off the table saw into it. This is a T-slot, a four-sided like T-slot aluminum fence. So I wanna sit that right about here. Now, I want the height of my fence to be roughly 100 mil, so 10 centimeters, four inches high. This guy is exactly 36, um, centimeters. So I'm going to cut three pieces at, let me see, 74 millimeters to sit this guy on. So this board is 12 millimeters thick. So I'm going to cut three pieces to sit him on down to 74 millimeters, I think. I think I have my mats right. And then I'll have one piece at 100 mil, which will just sit at the back of this. So it'll make more sense. It'll be four pieces to the front fence. This will be sitting on three of them and it'll have one at the back. And our front fence then will just consist of two pieces of 100 millimeters. Now, it's not essential to put on the front fence. It just gives a little bit more stability to the, the, the base plate. And um, if your arriving knife is too big or if you're gonna be, I suppose you will have to take a guard off to use these things anyway. So that doesn't even come into it. But uh, yeah. Let's get on. We need to cut two for the front at 100 mil, one for the back at 100 mil, and then three at 74 millimeters, I think. Let's do it and find out.
Like I said, the smarter people watching this video will have seen that my measurements were indeed wrong. It was 64 millimeters, not 74 millimeters I needed to be at. So that's what we'll have cut, cut these three pieces to now. So the idea was we have these three pieces that will stick together. We have a 100 mil piece for the back, which would sit like this. And then this guy was to sit on top just like this. So we could use him to attach various clamps and stop blocks to. Now, he sits about a mil proud here. He's just over 36 millimeters. The three of these boards together are exactly 36 mil. So that won't do. This has to be a perfectly flat face. So I'm going to lose this back piece. I'm going to flush him up with this and screw him down. And that will essentially be the top of my fence. It's just a nice way of using up this bit of aluminum T-track that I have that came off this table saw. So that's what we're going to do. And then we will take the 300 mil boards that we've left over and we'll use these for our front fence. So it's a case of glue and screw these now, which is uh, pretty straightforward. Let's get on that. Right guys, we're just going to glue these fences together now. I just have a flat board on the table. It's also just going to protect the table on my worktop from the glue. And uh, it's a nice flat table that I can set this up and clamp on. So very simple. I just have some type on tree. That's what I have to hand. So that's what we're going to use. So yeah, it's, it's always a good idea to just do a dry run first. I've already done that. So I know how this is going to go together. And uh, it's a case, very simple, just clamp and screw. Let's do it. Okay guys, we have our fences um, screwed and glued now. But the next thing you need to make sure is that everything is perfectly square. So you just wanna take your engineer square and run it up and down your fence. Make sure that this is perfectly square. Your, your back fence or your, your fence that you're gonna be um, using to do all your 90 degree cuts from, that needs to be 100% perfect. So make sure that that's square all around. If it's not after you've glued and screwed, take it to your table saw and true up those edges. So that's vitally important. The back one is not so important. Just true up the bottom edge. So just make sure that, that the edges you're screwing to the top of your sled is nice and square all the way along. We can actually affix this to the board now. Um, just align it with your edge. You don't have to worry about squaring this up. It's not important. This is only to give stability to the bottom part of your sled, just to add a bit of rigidity to the board. So simple process again, it's just going to be countersunk screws all the way along and we're going to screw this guy down. We are not going to fix our front fence yet. I then have to take this guy to the table saw and remove my riving knife again to put the cut into this. And it's that cut that we put into this that we will square our front fence from. Okay, so 
simple process. Drill and tap, and uh, or sorry, drill and count our sink, and just put screws in it. So let's do that. Okay, there we go, that's our back fence, or our front fence, depending on what way you're looking at it. It's fixed again, it doesn't have to be square, just align it with your edge and screw it down. It's just to add rigidity to this piece, it's not to work from. So we're going to take this to our table saw now and let's put our cut in. Right guys, I'm going to put my initial cut now into my board. This will give me my straight line to square my fence off. Now I've had to remove my riving knife because my riving knife sits higher than my blade. So I'm going to put my cut in, then I'll put my riving knife back on, I'll be able to use it with this sled then. So um, again, plug out the machine when you're taking your riving knife off, just safety, safety, safety. Just bear in mind, if you've had to take your riving knife off like me, just bear in mind that it's not there, you don't have a guard on, stay well away from the blade, keep your hands as far away from the blade as you possibly can. Do not do not take the cut all the way to this edge, we're not going to do that yet. We're going to, when we put our fence in, then we'll bring the cut all the way to the edge, so we can bring it most of the way, again, just hands well away from the blade when we're doing this all right safety 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 and uh, it's straightforward enough after that so let's plug it back in Right guys, that's our cut into our sled there. So this is the line we're now going to work from. We can now make sure that our front fence is exactly 90 degrees to this line and 90 degrees to our blade. The table saw is now plugged out again so everything is safe. We can work with our blade in place. I can slide this up and down. So I've, I've, I've affixed my T-track fence to my new um, chipboard fence and because this is a straight edge it ensures that this is pulled perfectly straight you can buy different types of t-track online you can even route it out into the front of the fence if you want there's loads of ways of doing this and um, again this is just me making use of what came with this table saw so uh, yeah so all we've got to do now is put a screw in one side of this guy a screw that we can pivot on again it's going to be a countersink thing we're just going to flush it up with the front and then we're going to take our engineer square and we're going to square our fence off this line. We'll roll up to our blade and we'll square our fence both sides off our blade. And we should be good at that. And then I'll show you some cut methods to find out how precise we actually are. So let's do that. Right guys, we have the screw in one side of our front fence. That just allows us to pivot this guy. So I'm just going to take my square now and push him up a little bit closer, right up to the edge there. And I want to make sure that I square this guy perfectly off my blade. So I want to be in between a tilt. I want to be up against the side of this blade. And I want to make sure that that is perfectly square. And that looks pretty bang on right there. there yeah I think that is pretty good and we're going to check that from the other side now as well and take our time with this and get it right that is saying that that is perfectly square there now at that check this side again perfectly square check this side again be 100%. We want this as accurate as we can make it. Okay, just tip that forward. Okay, you know, absolutely no daylight there. So that's my mark. So you just grab a quick pencil and just a knife mark. Describe that guy there. Okay, 
Let's pull this back. Okay, so my fence is exactly where I marked it, so I know it's square. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but as you can see, I'm in a few millimeters from the edge of my board. So it's not that we have to stay square to our board, it's, that it's the beauty of this jig is that we are now guaranteed square to our blade, or at 90 degrees to our blade. So let's get a screw in here. Okay, so we're just going to put the, that one screw in for now and we're going to just run a couple of test cuts and see how square we are. We might have to readjust again, but um, yeah, let's do that. Like guys, just one thing you need to pay attention to and that's the height of your saw blade. My saw blade goes about 70 mil from the top of my sled. This is roughly about 60 millimeters, so I can I potentially can cut straight into this um, aluminum tube track. So I want to just make sure that I'm always lower. I have my saw blade set now, so I'm just going to run my cut through here, and then we're going to do a couple of test cuts. So that's what's next. Okay guys, I have a piece of OSB here that I know has a perfectly straight edge on it. So I'm going to run that up against my fence. I'm just going to take a cut. I'm going to flip the piece over and see if it still lines up and we have no gaps. That's one way of checking that we have 90. And then I'll just check with the engineer square. There is another way you can do this. You can get a square board. You can take your cut, rotate 90 degrees, take it again, rotate it. Do that four times until you get back to the start and take your cut again. It's called the five cut method. There's plenty of videos on YouTube to check that out. and. The idea being that as you rotate that 90 degrees, you are exacerbating the error. So by the time you get around, you should have quadrupled that er your, your error. When you get back to your first cut, you can measure and then you can see how far you're out. But uh, for me, all I want now is to make sure this is at 90 degrees and I'm happy. So I'm gonna check with my engineer square. And once I cut this and flip it around, hopefully we should be good. So let's check it out. <laughs> Okay, that's our cut made. We flip this board around and hopefully we don't see any gaps. And we don't, that's, I can't say, can't get any better than that. So uh, that's happy days. We will just check with our square. I don't know if the camera can see that, but we are 100% perfectly square. Now, like I say, you can use larger boards. These are only small boards. The larger the board, obviously, by the time you get to the end of your cut, if there is any uh, imperfection or deviation it will exacerbate or get grow larger as it gets down the end of your cut the longer your cut but for me that's good enough for what i do that's actually perfect so according to the engineer square that's a perfect right angle so uh, i'm happy enough with that so the next thing i'm just going to grease the underneath of this tray and uh, we're almost there right just before i apply the paste wax to the bottom of this thing um i need to screw down my fence so i know now from my test cuts that i'm good and square i'm happy with where my fence is so again it's just going to be countersink a bunch of holes and lock this fence down so let's get on that Right, that's our fence now locked into its final position, 100% square, so uh, nothing to do, and I only flip this thing over and give it a grease up. Right, we're just going to apply a bit of a wax to the underneath of this guy and to our runners mostly, just to help it glide along. And paste wax or any other kind of wax that you have will do the job. Again, when you put it in, if you find that your runners are binding, just mark them with a pencil down either side. You can see where the pencil begins to rub off then. You can just give it a light sand until you have it running smooth. Remo 
mostly just want to do the runners. Let's give them a nice wax. Let's get some wax on this board. It just helps things glide nicely. Happy days. Right guys, there we go. That is our finished cross cut slid. I've just added a stop block here to my accessory rail. I can clamp that down anywhere I want. I've also, I can add a clamp here too if I need to. Um, there's a bunch of accessories we can add to this thing. So essentially what we've built ourselves is a, a sled with a zero clearance insert in it. We have support for our, our pieces on both sides of the blade. So when you're running your stuff through, you shouldn't get any um, frayed ends, which is beautiful. It's quick, it's easy to use. You're guaranteed 90 degrees to your blade. I've clamped it now to my um, crosscut sled. So it just rolls along beautifully with the sled itself or a crosscut carriage, I should say. So yeah, that's it guys. That's how you make a crosscut slate. One of the best jigs you can make for your table saw. So uh, hopefully this has been informative for you. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, comments and questions below. Anything you think I should have covered, just ask. Anything you want to know about, just ask. And uh, if it's been good, hit like. If you've enjoyed it, hit subscribe. And uh, we'll see you in the next one guys. Take care.